Okay, the sequence and steps in unstowing any knuckle boom is going to be boom up with your inner boom to where you have enough clearance to where your outer boom does not hit anything on the trailer. Once your inner boom is up to approximately 40 to 60 degree, then you can boom up with your outer boom. Once you've boomed up with your outer boom, then you can lower your winch, swing left or right, or telescope in or out. Uh, and then the same thing whenever you're going to stowing the crane. You're going to retract the boom in all the way. You're going to, to winch up into a two block position. Then you're going to boom down with your inner with your outer boom until it bottoms out. And then you're going to boom down with your inner boom until this piece of bar goes into its V channel. Um, so what we're going to do first is we've got the power pack running. Okay. We're going to turn our control power on on our control box or our power box. We do have a work light switch. We've got work lights up on the, the headache rack. Yeah, I see. We've got the power pack. We've got two on each side of the trailer. And then we've got two at the rear. Our throttle, we can operate from here as well. High throttle and idle. We do not have a strobe on this machine, so the strobe is, is not, there's not a strobe. Uh, we do have an e-stop. <laughs> which is different than the e-stop on the crane. By hitting the e-stop on the crane, it's just gonna kill all hydraulic functions. By hitting this e-stop on the power box, it's going to choke off air to the motor via the air intake and kill the motor instantly. And we'll go over that in a minute because if you do happen to hit this e-stop, you have to go up to the power pack and flip a lever so that you can start it back up. So we've got a key switch that goes from hand control to, to radio remote. So when running the crane in hand control or the, the outriggers, we want it to be on hand controls. Okay. The top lever is going to be for the front stabilizer. Uh, it's going to go up and down. By pulling the lever in the direction that the picture shows, it's going to do what the picture shows. So if I pull this lever towards me, the front outrigger is going to go down. Can I control that from this remote? No, you cannot. The outrigger controls are only on, you operate the driver's side from here, the passenger side from the opposite, opposite side of here. So what I do first is I do the rear outrigger, uh, the, which is these two here, our top one, is going to extend and retract the beam in and out. Our bottom one is going to raise and lower the jack. Okay. We're going to extend the outrigger beam out. No plates on the bottom of this? That's it. Until it's all the way extended. You don't want to stop short. You want to fully extend the outrigger. This load chart on this crane is, is made and designed for the outrigger to be fully extended. Okay. So I'm going to put a pad underneath it. I'm going to lower the jack. You can set this crane up a couple of different ways. Some people prefer to get it as high off the ground as you can. Um, by doing that, when running the crane, the trailer will kind of rock backwards and forwards because we've got the air brakes set on the trailer, but if I, if I take the tires completely off the ground, then, then it's going to have some, some, some rocking back and forth or forward and back. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm putting down the outriggers to where we still have contact with the ground with the tires, but I've unloaded the suspension. Okay. Okay. So we're going to extend our passenger side rear outrigger. This pad. But what this pad is nice for is if it's if, if it's loamy soil or mud, and even asphalt or concrete. I mean, if it's got a water line or anything underneath there, you could easily this foot could punch through the concrete. So the outrigger mat. It's just kind of pushing the weight out. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this unit level from front and back and side to side. Uh, we've got a level bubble over... I see it. Right up underneath here. Uh, You're pretty close. Looks like we're pretty close to level. Uh, when in doubt, 
you know this level bubble can get knocked or hit and, and you know if you can you know if you, if you think that the bubble is not accurate then you'll need to re-level it with a with a surface level to make sure that the level bubble is working properly okay once we've got the outriggers out and our crane is level or our trailer is level uh, we can switch it over to radio remote controls so we're going from hand control to radio this is our radio remote here uh, we've got a key that will turn it on after about three or four seconds it will go through its little wake up to sync the radio to this crane we hit this green button one time by hitting the green button one time it should have linked to this crane and be ready to rock now on our radio remote we have an e-stop button by hitting that e-stop button none of the functions work we toggle it out clockwise and we're back live on our crane well we actually have to sync it back up again and now we're back live on our crane okay um the black knob is going to just be a percentage of stroke of the lever so at 100 percent we've got full stroke of the lever it's going to be at 100 percent of speed uh, we can turn that down uh, to 25 50 or 75 if you're in a tight area you've got a lot of men working you might want to turn that down and all the functions are just going to go that much slower okay we've got an rpm switch whenever we switch it to high rpm we're gonna the, the power pack is going to go to high throttle when we put it to the middle position it's going to go back down to idle after a few seconds when we do it to auto rpm it's going to stay at idle until we stroke a lever where it'll go back to high throttle and then when we let off that lever after about five seconds or so it'll go back down to idle that's, that's going to help conserve your fuel okay so when you're running this crane I, I would highly recommend you run it in auto okay so you're out here we're talking we can hear each other you get ready to run the crane it automatically idles up and then after a few seconds it idles back down uh, we can start and stop the engine from the radio we can stop it then we can start it back up this right here is going to be our e-kill or e-stop for the, the motor. It's going to choke off air to the motor, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, we've got a horn, which is just like a signal horn. If you've got a truck backing up or you've got a man that's in the way, just kind of a way to alert them that they're in the way. Uh, the last switch or toggle is going to be for our boom light. We can turn the boom light on and then we can toggle it again and turn it off which we'll see whenever we start running the crane. Uh, the radio remote comes with a couple of different straps. It looks like we have the waistband strap on it now. It also comes with a neck strap that you can clip on here that you can hang over your neck and use either or or both. So now we're ready to run the crane. We've got, this, is, uh, this crane has five different functions. We have a swing function and it's going to be the same on the hand controls. We have an inner boom function, an outer boom, a telescope in and out, and a winch up and down. When running a knuckle boom, the first thing that you do when unstowing is you boom up with your inner boom. Okay? We don't run the winch, we don't telescope in and out because the crane is stowed in an inverted position. So the first thing you do, and we've got a little a little decal or sticker showing it on the crane, is you boom up with your inner boom. Now once you've boomed up, where we can tell that our outer boom is going to clear from hitting the trailer, then we go to run our outer boom, okay? If I were to run the outer boom whenever we were down in the stone position, it, it would, wouldn't have anywhere to go except for hit the crane or hit a cylinder or so forth and so on. So now I'm going to raise my outer boom. Once you have the crane at approximately close to zero degrees, you can run your winch down, which we've got a two-part line on this crane right now. 
So we've got a low block that's two-parted. Okay, now we're gonna telescope out. This crane has an internal two-block device. You don't see a weight and a chain hanging from the tip of the boom to where, you know, like on a boom truck, you would see a weight and a chain, and when the block came into contact with the weight, it would kick you out. This is all internal. You can't two block the crane and, and damage the, the, the wire rope or the tip of the boom. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna telescope out and not winch down, and you'll see it'll go into a two block scenario, and then it'll just stall out. Okay, I can do the same thing with the winch. I can winch up and it just gets it tight. It doesn't hurt anything. Nice thing about the radio remote is you can walk around the unit as you're running it. So you have full visibility of your boat. Done and You'd that's have it. a guy up on the deck. He would hook the lifting bar into the hook of the crane. Uh, or he could use a strap, whichever he preferred. And then you would pick this basket up and you could set it off to the side of the trailer. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, boom down on our outer boom until it's all the way knuckled under. Once it stops and it's all the way down, we're going to boom down with our inner boom. want to be too far over towards the rear or we'll hit the control valve. We don't want to be too far over this way or we might hit some of their iron. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down slowly. Just like that. Now the crane is stowed, ready for travel. All we would do is retract our outriggers in after we've lifted the cylinders up and we'd be ready to road the unit.